Welcome to the Resume Storyteller, bringing you interviews with industry experts, regular folks who tested the job search waters and succeeded, and strategies to tell your story and land you job interviews. Here's your host, Virginia Franco. Hey there. Today, I will not have a guest. Um, it's just going to be me. Um, for those of you who are new to the Resume Story- Storyteller podcast, I am Virginia Franco. I'm the owner of Virginia Franco Resumes. And I want to talk today about applicant tracking software system. There are a few things that are more confusing for job seekers than the role that applicant tracking system software plays in the screening process, exactly how it reads resumes that get submitted, And I will tell you that it is often a reason why people come knocking on the doors of professional resume writers. To make it more confusing, as technology continues to evolve, so too do the systems. So what I would like to do in today's episode is to talk through a little bit about the history of ATS, what it was designed to do, how it used to work, how it works now. I'm also going to share some sort of potential issues that you might come across with ATS, um, which is the, I, just, I keep saying ATS. ATS is the acronym for Applicant Tracking Software System Software or Software Systems. And then I'm also going to talk through some workarounds. So let's just get to it. ATS made its way onto the hiring scene in the late 1990s. It's been around for a long time now, but it was designed to help companies organize the influx of resumes that were coming in during the era when job boards just exploded onto the hiring scene. So remember, if you're old enough to remember Monster and, you know, and then Indeed and and all of those, they came on the scene after years of snail mail and sort of manual sorting of resumes. Having a software that could work like a filing cabinet and organize all of the resumes that were coming in was fabulous. More importantly, it provided you know, the recruiter or the HR person with keyword searching functionality. Um, So think about if a recruiter needed to find someone in customer service, they could quickly type in the word customer service and boom, a bunch of resumes would pop up. So what an incredible way to file and find and and be able to quickly retrieve candidate information, um, which would have taken so much longer prior to this kind of uh, really groundbreaking software system. Um, But fast forward to today, 2021, and there are over 200 different ETS systems. There are, you know, some larger ETS providers who do have the lion's share of the market. Even though no two work exactly the same, they all do sort of have some commonality. So I recognize that it's, you know, you don't always know which system a job seeker is facing when applying online. So the advice that I share is based on what I understand to be the lowest common denominator, I should let you know that I'm not a recruiter. I did not work um, in an HR role when ATS was really dominant on the scene. But my advice and my experience is grounded by having a really nice network of people that have been in HR, who have been on the front lines with these systems, and who have given me exposure to them and really let my resumes be run by them. So let me also just sort of give a... What I'm going to give again is that that non-techie explanation. So after writing, you write your resume and then you need, you go to the company website or, you know, to submit. ATS basically transforms your resume into the equivalent of sort of a plain text document where it, you know, it parses everything down and it it scans it and parses it and it it assigns um, values or register select criteria. Sometimes the criteria is the number of years. Sometimes the criteria are certain keywords based on whatever the post or the job position that he's filling. So in the early days, ATS, a lot of ATS have had a, a tough time reading and scanning, which is why back when you see people sharing guidance around, you know, here are the strategies you need to get your resume read correctly. And you'd see stuff like, only use Times Roman font and it needs to be 10 point. And you have to make sure that the word professional, ex- you have to make sure the word experience is, is on there and that your your headline, your headers have to be really generic because ATS only, won't even recognize it if it's not in there. Fortunately, you don't need to worry about that anymore. 
I, I used to have to create a plain text document for my clients where I would take the Word document, convert it, and then do a bunch of jerry rigging to give the um, to allow the job seeker to use that plain text document just to upload. You don't need to worry about that anymore because the today's systems are much much more advanced, uh, which means that practice is no longer necessary. So that being said, there's still a couple things that ATS can't read or doesn't recognize when it comes to Microsoft Word documents and a couple of them with uh, PDF documents. So if something is called, you know, anything with color, anything with shading, a graphic image or sort of advanced design elements, doesn't matter what format you send it in, Word or PDF, it can't read it. So if your text is blue, it doesn't recognize it as blue, it recognizes it as black. If you're, um, if you've got, you know, gray shading behind something, it doesn't pick that up. Um, and again, it overlooks anything with graphic imagery. When you submit in a Word document, it often can't read anything in a text box um, or anything in a header or a footer. So given those sort of uh, things that it can't recognize, I want to talk through some potential problems that might arise and some workarounds. Problem number one, let's say that you have put your contact information in the header or footer in your Microsoft Word document. So one solution would be to convert it to PDF and then hope that when you go to that company or that website, that it accepts PDF as a format. And most of the ATS systems do still, not all, but most do. ATS can read, or a PDF, ATS can read any PDF documents. It doesn't recognize anything being in a header or a footer, so you don't have to worry about it. With Microsoft Word, because it can't read it, the alternative for you is to take the information from the header and footer and put it into the body of the resume. So if you put your contact info in there and you're worried you might have to submit the document using Microsoft Word, just stick it in the header or footer. Problem number two is when people use resume templates that require you to sort of enter information into text boxes to complete. If it's a Microsoft Word document, when ATS is reading it, it just it won't see any of it. So you run the risk that it won't be able to recognize half of what you have in there. The good thing, though, is if you submit it as a PDF, generally speaking, it can read the stuff. And it has to do with how the technology looks at it. So PDF, my understanding is it sort of captures it as a, takes a snapshot of it, where if it's Microsoft, the, the system that will design to work exclusively with Microsoft Word, it looks at things in layers. Uh, I don't really get how that works, but all I know is that if you are using a resume template, you will need to save it to PDF to be read. And then you probably can only submit it to those companies where the ATS is programmed to accept PDF. With the other, the sort of the other thing I see sometimes is with some of the older systems that ATS, if it doesn't see a company name alongside a job title, it doesn't always give you the proper credit for the year spent in the position. So let's say you have held three different jobs, you know, you've been promoted with a company. If you don't have, if you just list the company name at the top and then list your titles, it might not give you credit for some of those earlier roles. So what, what I do to, Again, this only happens with some with some of the newer systems. This is no longer happening, which is great. But you don't you don't always know what you're dealing with. So what I do is I make sure to put the company name adjacent to the um, to the job title, but I will change the color of that of that company name to white if it's a white background or to the color of the shading if I've used shading. Um, that way, the reader can easily see the progression within the company and ATS will give you the, give the role the credit that it deserves. Um, with regards to graph charts and graphs that can't be used, I am not a fan of graphics for graphics sake. Um, and I do, but there are times when a really good graph or chart can help. You know, if you're in sales and you have, um, it's really powerful to show a bar, a bar line or a um, arrow graph that shows where you, you know, grown revenues. So, what I make sure to do is, any time I use a graph or a chart, anything where there are numbers or ticks in that graph or chart, I make sure to include them in the body of the text. Um, which brings me to the last issue, which is the whole staying away or staying clear of graphics for graphics' sake. What happens when your resume is just so overwhelming with graphics and you upload it, you know, some of the systems, it, it's used how it parses the information. 
if you write your resume in Canva, for instance, sometimes a lot of the older ATS just really don't know what to do with it. So what I do to just sort of cover all my bases is I create a resume in Microsoft Word for the sort of the old systems and the new systems. And then I save it to a PDF. And that ensures that no matter what software the person is dealing with, everything can be read. I also want to dis- dispel the notion of your resume getting kicked out by ATS. That's just not the case. ATS isn't designed to accept or kick out. It is designed, as I said, to file it. The second myth that I want to just dispel is that recruiters don't even look at it, that the bot looks at it first and then it'll get in front of the human. That is not always the case. In fact, I just saw a, um, a Twitter conversation where someone cited a study and something like over three quarters of recruiters personally put their eyeballs on every single resume. You know, no, that's not the case for all recruiters because imagine if a recruiter has, you know, a lot, a lot of postings that they're juggling and they're getting an influx of resumes. They might not always get to look at them, but most, you know, the majority of recruiters do take the time to look. Um, companies like Google have teams that that's their job is to look at all that stuff. So ATS is a tool for them, but it is not always a substitute. And I say that to say that you really, really need to focus on writing for the human being first and foremost, and then sort of worry about the ATS stuff later. Um, because if you focus for writing for the machines, what I've seen when people do that is that the document just it doesn't resonate with the human being. And at the end of the day, humans are hiring humans. The good news for me is that, or for all of us, is that thanks to advances in AI and machine learning, ATS is getting better all the time. And so while, again, while I don't seem to understand all the ins and outs of how the technology works, um, it, it's getting better. There are you know fairly easy workarounds for a lot of these glitches that are becoming you know fewer and fewer, which is wonderful. So I hope that that explanation helps. And if you ever run into any questions, you know where to find me. Thanks so much, guys. You've been listening to The Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco. To learn more about storytelling strategies to catch the eye of today's online CM hiring and decision makers, please visit www.virginiafrancoresumes.com.